Okay. I'm going to call a meeting to order. Approval of the March minutes. I move to approve them. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, uh, Sergeant Flannery, does anyone have anything for Sergeant Flannery? He's here um, to represent the Webster Grove Police Department. We usually do our city update a little later in the meeting, but Sergeant Flannery has a busy morning. So if there's any issues uh, that need to be brought up, just good time to bring them up. Or if Sergeant Flannery, you have anything. I don't have anything. Anybody have any anything for me? All right. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Good. Okay. You're good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I already go so soon. Right. It's all good. All right. All right. Um, Visitors' comments. Yeah. We don't have no visitors. Perfect. Old business, rooftop lighting. All of an oak uh, has been quoted, and so they'll start that work either this week or next. They're coordinating with Mark, okay. so uh, that is next. Um, do you? We certainly have budget capacity, both this budget and next budget, for the next buildings, which I think in the the law the the plan had been uh, Maury's building, the, the former bank building right. on the corner. Mm -hmm. Um, does anyone have a good contact? Is it Maury directly? Are we talking to or? I think yes. So okay. definitely. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll get we'll get quotes around from different vendors on putting those up and such. Okay. So sounds good. What um and so I don't know if you have or you could maybe look this up or, or you don't know you don't have it here. But Strive they redid the lights on our building to go all the way to the dentist office. Uh -huh. They they still are only working the halfway from. Um, Acme to uh, O and O Pizza. They're not working on the yeah. the other side. So. I saw them work one night, and then the next night it got a little wet, and they didn't work anymore. Right, so, yeah, so, that, so I can have them come back out. I mean, we can go to a different vendor. What do you want to do? So, right. They need to come back out. Okay. So what are so there must? I mean, they were, I saw them all up there on those buildings, replacing all the bulbs with the washers. Okay. There's something else. Either, either they missed it or the strand has a it, It's a moisture issue. Right. Well, the strand just has to be replaced. Right. Yeah. Which we have plenty of strands. Yeah. And, so let's just get that yeah. strand replaced yeah. because there's some, there's no reason patching that thing anymore. Yep. I mean, it's like okay. something hidden that no one can see that. Got it. And so who to get up there? Who who do I connect Matt with? Is it Joe? Is it Joe? Ron? Who do you want? No, no, no one. You don't need to have anybody. They can get up to the okay. roof uh, from the back of any of our buildings. Okay. Right. And they, yeah, it's easily accessible, like really behind Bill's building is like a little, you know, a really, really, really tall step ladder. You can get up there yeah. and then okay. you just crawl over. And okay. Got it. But the key on that is uh, they keep going out and fixing it for one day. We need a whole new strand that goes east. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Um, lighting in the trees has been completed in front of Canary Park and um, in front of Dan Warner's building. That's correct. So the only question I had is I, I know Dan Warner's building, it's on all the time. There's no, the circuit's just on. Um, so either we'll need to get a timer or an electric eye. I got you. So, okay. and that's fine. We can order those. I just want to make sure. Right. We'll, yeah, no, we need to get yeah. something. So yeah, it doesn't want to be. We'll correct. get those, but otherwise they're there. So, okay, got yeah. it. Okay. So um, this is on the agenda. I know that lamppost electricity uh, access. Uh, with the budget, we've done nothing with this. So I, right. uh, is this just a marker here, Fran, so that we would keep we, bringing it up? Yeah, okay. we said yeah. last month that yeah. we needed to do it. So that's what well, we, it's we, we, Yeah, we wanted to, I guess, try to look into it. We looked into it multiple times. Well, that's what I meant. Year. We needed to get the price. It was what you guys said. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Well, wasn't that we were going to do anything physically. Uh -huh. just needed and that's well that's fine i i'm gonna have yeah. strive here and i'll have someone quoting on Morris building we'll just get prices so yeah, have them look at the damn bowl it and, requires yeah. completely rewiring all of old webster because the light poles only have two wires pulled in the 220. that's what i figured that's been the issue for 25 years Okay, bench, bench repair triage. So I have uh, I've walked all the benches, taken pictures, 
Uh, so Yvonne is putting together a quote of if you want to replace some new benches, right? And then also the slats. So I think uh, our just very initial look at it is that we're probably looking at about, we can make six solid complete benches out of reconfigure out, out of what we have. Okay. Everyone's memorial plate will be saved. And then if we go to the full 12, another six would need to be ordered if okay. you want to continue with the same amount. Um, that includes the one that I suggested getting rid of. And I think we all agreed on yes, last time did. on the, that spot on the park. Mm -hmm. so, right. Yeah. Six can be salvaged. Yeah. I mean, six new ones. Right. So she's pulling together the quotes. Hope to have them next month for you all. Sounds great. And then she also, um, Stacy had mentioned also just to look into those steel ones. Yes. Yeah, so they're giving us a quote on the prices. Right. On the, exactly. Yeah. Just to see what those are. Exactly. So. Yep. Okay. Um, so district kiosk. I know Stacy's on. I have not made any. We've asked for quotes, have not gotten anything back. Haven't pushed them with budget. Just haven't had. I guess one of my one of my thoughts on the key, so I've been thinking about kiosk a lot. Um, not really a lot, but a little bit. <laughs> Very little actually. Um, but it was one of the things that the public really voted down. You know, it was like one of the lowest things on that on the yeah. ARB bounce AR, back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so. Um, and I was thinking, it's like, if I go to the Grove, let's say, you know, which is, I don't go to the Grove very often, but if I go there and I go to a restaurant that I want to eat at and it's full and I'll just get on my phone and I've got a kiosk on my phone, you know, I just hit Google and it's all just right there. Isn't that everybody? Because I'm an old person. <laughs> so, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to argue about a kiosk. Certainly, from a staff perspective, I mean, when we look at it, it's one of the things. Like we have the restaurant map on right. the city website, uh -huh. which is a a nice thing to have. Right. I have never in my life gone to a city's website to find out what restaurants are in the city. Right. That's called Google. Right. right? Exactly. And I, right. There, there is a question of like if you know if the BDC, and we'll talk about this in a second. Like they have this business liaison proposal in front of the the council. Mm -hmm. You know, is there is there more to be done on that side? You know what I mean? Of optimizing what people find, how people find find us through the tools that are already out there. Right. You can make that argument. Right. That's really a decision for you all, but I'm just bringing that up that that has crossed our minds here right. at the hall as well. Right. So, yeah, it would be money better spent to move us up on search engine entire, you know, mm -hmm. or something like that. Find people who know how to do that type of stuff, what I think. But, you know, if I go to anywhere, I'm, I, you know, if I go down to Dallas, I just pull up Google Maps and hey, restaurants near me, you know, and I don't know where I'm going or so. I I mean, even now I'm a younger consumer, but I don't even watch signs much anymore, right? Because my phone will walk me right to the door, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I don't even I'm not even looking for wayfinding signs like like I used to. So. Right. Okay. So, but that's again not my. I don't, I I think the reason why I like a wayfinding sign so much, I think it defines your neighborhood. You know, it makes you feel like it's a destination. Like if you go into Kirkwood, you see their wayfinding signs and it kind of just brings their neighborhood together. Like you feel like you're somewhere. Yeah. Don't, don't dispute that at all, Stacey. My, my, my statement was more about like navigating to the store. I, I totally understand what you're saying and the idea of destination, retail and signage all branded. Totally get it. Don't disagree. Just just was in, in relation to getting to, right? And, and so that's that's my point. So. Does does Kirkwood have a kiosk? Do you know, Stacy? Several, several, several kiosks. Drive down to the farmers market. There's one in the farmers market. There, there's one um, at every parking lot. There's one at almost every single corner. Ron literally just drives through it, and you'll be like, "Oh my gosh!" All right. It just brings their neighborhood together so well. Okay. I like the kiosk at the mall. Yeah. I do use a kiosk at a mall. I do use that because I don't, yeah. you know, I, I, that, that is one place, but I don't really go to the mall anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd Sears go? <laughs> so we, again, quote, uh, requests have been made out for folks that um, through parks that okay. know the electronic, the, as we talked about the digital mm -hmm. kiosk. So they're, they're pulling three quotes for us to okay. give us a sense of, of what, and then we'll, we've asked for multiple quotes in case the other districts would like them as well, you know, across all three. So, okay. 
Uh, before maybe before you even bring it to us, you'd want to have the ARB approve the design because you know Webster's all about what it looks like. So, right. um, so if it's really modern, people might not like it. Right. Completely agree, Bill. I think that because the digital sign ordinance includes the city, you know, we essentially, if you're going to go to a digital kiosk, we're going to have to ask the council to exempt themselves. Right. You know, yeah. from that for this purpose, uh, we probably want to have the exemption in hand before we have to go to ARB. The council may exempt us from ARB, all parts of that, right? right. And that's for the city, that's generally been what's happening. Same like the firehouse. You know, we, you know, we make a change here in City Hall. We don't go to ARB and such. We just we move ourselves through our own process. Right. The thing about that though is it's really nice to have input from the community versus just us making a decision in the council, just making a decision just because that's why they're on the ARB. And I just think more, more data points from other people before we actually make a decision on that is really important. I think it's a great idea and I, that's the way I would move, but that's my opinion. And I know that a lot of other people in Webster probably don't think the same way. I don't want to get the cart before the horse and then we're putting it up and then all of a sudden in the web, <laughs> we have 22 right. letters about why we did this. Right. right. No, exactly. Okay. Any other comments on the kiosks? Well, you know, I, I understand the comments being made about the Kirkwood because Kirkwood is downtown area is I think larger than Old Webster, but it's also more congested. And so I can see where that would be a valid need and use for a kiosk. But I, I question the value of that in Old Webster at this time. Um, as you've mentioned, you know, people can look on their uh, cell phone, uh, Google uh, a restaurant or Google the area and find out what's there and even find out how far they are from it. You know, I, you know, I just don't know. I question the wisdom of the expense of something like that and um, how much it'll be utilized. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that too. I think better signage is what, or signage, really super nice signage. I mean, we spent a lot of money on the two hour parking with um, Wearmeyer Creative, but they've lasted for 20 something years and they are nice and they still look really nice. And I'd rather put, money into quality, quality signage like that or re replicate that because we do need more of those. We're going to run out. Those are going to be damaged over time. And that's a, the most important thing we need is better signage to get to where we're parking, that you're actually in old Webster. People just think it's Webster Grows, not old Webster. And then, um, you know, maybe at um, Elm and uh, Lockwood, we have better signage that we do have signs on the, as you're crossing under, I was on that project. When we put them up, we thought they were going to be too big, the circles, but they could be quite a bit larger. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you cross underneath the stoplight on Elm, there is a old Webster sign going both ways. I just it could be better and nicer, as I'm trying to say. I really want to make another comment on that. I agree with the Googling restaurants, but we have so much more in Webster Grove. So when you come into Webster and you're looking for a restaurant, you're Googling a restaurant. Where are they finding that there's boutiques in stores? Well, they're, they're not going to do it. Just They're going to be walking the streets. I mean, they're going to be walking around the streets. And then if they come to a different part of Webster, Unless we're putting a kiosk at all the parking areas, you know, I'm That's trying to say. We were, we were discussing putting it at the entry of the main parking garage um, over. But there's a lot of employees that park there, not actual customers. Yeah. I'm just putting out my two cents. I, I think it'd be better if you put, we spent more money on making the downtown look more so people would walk the district that's where they're gonna find those restaurants and shops. And then it's word of mouth. And then the, I put more money into our actual events, the ones that we get people to come and come down to Old Webster. And then you were talking about the CDC, you know, getting your uh, Webster so that's a higher on the Google 
search is probably better for a, you know a, a retail place than than I think the kiosk because they have to be here to get here. If they're from Chicago, you want them to Google St. Louis and then maybe Webster Gross pops up. Let's get some quotes. We're going to get a quote on the kiosk, see where that is, and then we'll know approximately what that's going to be versus how much it's going to be for a some additional signage. And we can kind of just play that out and kind of see. Um, I guess everybody just kind of talk to friends of yours that you could think are just basically your neighbors and just kind of just see how they find stuff and see, you know, when they search for stuff and see when they go to Kirkwood, how do you find stuff when you're in Kirkwood? Um, and let's do it that way. And just, I mean, we're not experts at this. None of us are. Um, so we just need to try to get as much information before we do, before we do something that somebody doesn't like or something. I don't know. So. Well, you know, one of the things that I've always kind of wondered about is, is there any data that shows during the month of June where you have the Opera Theater of Saint of Web, uh, the Opera Theater of St. Louis performing at the Rep? Is there any data that shows that business uh, restaurants, in particular, uh, have increased traffic because of that, or is there some? Uh, is there, that brings a lot of different people into the community just just in that particular month, and uh, I'm just wondering if that's if there's a way to either find out if there's any data on that or find ways that the Old Webster and maybe even Old Orchard can tie into the, um, to that, that major event in the city during that month. Because the restaurants, obviously their people are gonna eat, probably wanna eat before then and go see the show. Um, I was just wondering if there's any data out there. There is, there is data about events like that. I don't know if we have any micro data specific to that event and such, um, but there is, there's a multiplier effect of events like that and people, that creation of foot traffic coming to restaurants and you know may do some uh, window shopping or, or stop-ins and such before. I'll take a look and see if we have anything or through the CDC if they have anything about that specifically, um, but there are, there are potentials for that. And also I know the opera, I think, I think the opera does a, a program book and often so this is, you know, businesses to do just that, right? You know, when yeah, you then you have the rep during their regular season, right. that brings in people from a lot of different areas. And I would think that would increase foot traffic. Um, you know, I would think that would hopefully draw in people to the restaurants and possibly they would notice, hopefully, some of the other shops that are available around there and maybe maybe some of those shops can find try to find a way to tie into uh, those particular events which bring in people to the community and then you have Insight Theater has events at uh, the Hagney. Um, I don't know about Eden Seminary. I don't know how active they are anymore. Um, you know, that's just um, an idea, you know, just to mm -hmm. make that was taken advantage of. I know I've talked to Cyrano's um, before and they have huge spikes when mm -hmm. those events are going on. I mean, uh, it mostly is more concentrated in Old Orchard than, you know, it's, you know, it's Cyrano's Big Sky, um, possibly Frisco now, I don't know, but, you know, those are, I know we can talk to John Barr about that and see if he notices that, but it does seem like that is a, a little more of an Old Orchard type uh, event that, you know, is where they benefit a little bit more than us. I'm sure that we oh, we definitely benefit. I was in Muds one night for a dinner, and they canceled the rep for some reason. Can't remember why or whether or something. And uh, they had to send waitresses home. Wow. Okay. Oh, so they did so, so they, they, they they were staffed up for. The rep and so the rep and okay. oh, right. yeah. well, I mean the opposite it brings in people from outside the country. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and how are those people finding out what we have in Webster Groves? All the things besides just our restaurants. Right. Right. So if you put CJ Mugs, where are they seeing? What else there is to, do they know that they can walk four doors down from CJ Muggs and go to Euclid Records? 
Right. No, I, I just had somebody yesterday, Stacy, who was at O&O Pizza, and they lived in St. Louis, and they didn't. They're like, oh, I didn't even know there was a bike shop here, which of course kills me. Um, but you know, I I still sold him, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff, you know, and he just was, uh, you know, I, I do believe it's the restaurants that bring people in, um, and then it's how do we then capitalize on that to get the people to go into the other retail stores. Um, so I definitely agree that. I really. Uh, I really think a mom who, if I had my kids with me and we were waiting at Parkmore and I, you know, I was like, I, I would do this. I know I would. I would be like, Josh, Sam right here. I see a little kiosk over there with a map. I want to see what else is in this town. They might have ice cream for after dinner. Uh -huh. okay. I would run across the street to that kiosk and look, I've done it in other towns so many times. You know, and uh -huh. even if we just have one or two kiosks and like main areas that like you can see as you're walking, like, okay, people park here, there's a kiosk. We can at least have, what's that little digital thing that you put your phone up to? What's that called again? It's a QR code. A QR code that maybe we can ask the businesses if we can put in each window that says like explore Webster Groves with the QR code. That's like, um, a sticker yeah no i think oh, that's a fantastic idea i think that's really a good idea super simple super inexpensive Can yeah not, yeah but i still think we need at least one kiosk at the parking okay just something that has this is our neighborhood there's more to webster groves than just these amazing restaurants right okay I mean, Paisley's been open 10 years. I've had customers in the past year and a half come in who go to O&O &O and are on the wait list. They come in, they're like, oh my gosh, I live in Kirkwood. I didn't even know that there was things like this in Webster. And it, But it's so rare that they were walking mm -hmm. around. The only reason they walked into Paisley is because they happened to use that parking lot. Yeah. There's yeah. no other for them to come that far down you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah. i do okay let's move on to right. any other comments sorry no nope. somebody... oh, me. oh gotcha. <laughs> all right um, on street parking so uh, we are prepared to send our email out now. Yeah. I, I apologize to you all, but we had to work with the politics because there are some restaurant owners that picked up that we were going to be taking away the, the uh, designated curbside parking and that created a kerfluffle here at City Hall. So, okay. so we will be, I don't, you don't have to put that in there. So, uh, but my point is the email is going out, okay. um, but we're also going to have to have a meeting because we're going to need to codify because there's, there's going to be a request from restaurants to have some curbside parking spots. For like 15 minutes. Well, like exactly. Yes. So, so yeah. the point is, is between you, Old Orchard, we're going to have to have a meeting, you know, to have folks come together and we'll lay out some parking maps and be like, if we put some in certain spots, you know, does that qualify? Certainly we can't have four spots being used up. Right. That's, right? I mean, that's totally right. <laughs> understand all of that. But uh, so my point is, is though, is we, we've operated this on the, if we just shut it off, we go back to the old rules, right? And there isn't any, and they made a valid request that they, they would like some, so uh -huh. the, so we'll put together that meeting. We'll be between Old Orchard, Old Webster, whoever wants to be there from the districts and such, and we'll we'll come up with a plan, present it back officially and such like that. Okay. So, um, so the kerfluffle has been unkerfluffed. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> it was an interesting kerfluffle. I'll tell I you that. Bet it was. <laughs> okay. Um, we already touched on this a little bit about commission vacancies, but um, I will reach out to Dave Smith and see if him or somebody else would be in his office would be willing to sign up. Um, and then uh, anyone want to talk to the people at Regions? I actually wanted to say something about the parking really fast. Just okay. sure. is it possible to to make the parking actually on Lockwood um, a 30 minute parking instead of two hour? Uh, 
I don't think so. I mean, I hate to say that people are going into restaurants and 30 minutes would not, I mean. Right, there's other parking for them though. So, so Stacy, feel- just, just the quick answer is anything's possible. The city can set the parking rates at, or limits at whatever they wish. Um, what the city council will want to know, especially since it's in your district, is what's this body's recommendation. We just did this with Old Orchard down around their, their area and we added another handicap spot. City council is going to approve that. Um, so, you know, what I would suggest, what I'm hearing from Ron, just to help give this conversation a, a good spot, is if there are certain areas that we can certainly look at, I don't know that the council, even if this body said, let's get rid of two hours, I think you'd have the same restaurant owners back in here um, with all streets, all places on, on Lockwood. Mm-hmm. So, so I think there's, there's a way to do it if you all want to do it, mm-hmm. but it's going to be selective areas and such rather than one two hour parking all the way down. So a little bit of history on the two hour. It used to be three hour. There were some three hours and, and business owners would like, they, you couldn't, they would just move their car. Sure. Yeah. And that, so that didn't work. Um, and so then it was two hour. And, and then people were complaining that it wasn't long enough. And we still have people complaining it's not long enough. Here's my thought is that if you come into Webster Groves to go to a restaurant, you're going to that restaurant. You're going to find parking. If you're coming into Webster Groves and you see a bike shop and there's somebody who's going to a restaurant that you know they already had a reservation at, parked in front of that bike shop for two hours, when you know that person would have found a different parking spot, would you think that they're going to drive around and park? Who's going to park farther away? A restaurant? Or a bike shop. Customer. Bike shop people don't complain about walking too much. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, no, that's an example. You know, let's we'll just say it's any other business. I understand. But yeah, don't get me wrong. It happens the whole day long in front of our store. Yeah, I mean, people park. Yeah, but it, yeah, I don't own the street parking. So, um, you know, I, I tell, I, I've been telling my customers if they say they can't find a spot, I'm like, go ahead and use the employee lot. It's, you know, for now it's open. Nobody says anything. It's like, that gets full again and somebody may say something. Um, no different than I see people for Ono Pizza parking back there too. And it's, it's fine. There's room, you know, when, I, when there's no room again, that'll become an issue. Um, the, uh, I just don't know what a, a good answer there is. I, I do know that the right across the street from really Acme more than me, but there's a bus parking spot now um, that used to be a, a, a place where people could park. People park there all day long and it says no parking. Nobody pays attention to any signs whatsoever. They don't know it's two hour parking. They don't know anything about it. I mean, people pull up in front of our shop and I know that o and Pizza just had a water main break or something. So they had some repairman who pulled a big giant white van parked in front of our store for four hours. Um, you know, and that's just, happens you know it's you know it's i called the police and i can have them ticketed um i did i was hoping it would be temporary you know i didn't know how long he'd be there for but that's how long he was there for so yeah. the thought of mine what i say with that is like if i were to pull up at a spot that's 30 minutes i'd be like oh i definitely know i'm going to be at this restaurant for more than 30 minutes when i pull into a two-hour spot and say we decide to walk around town after the restaurant my thought is, oh, it was two hours. I mean, what's an extra 15 minutes? Well, so there you're talking about somebody pulling into an evening restaurant and then walking around our district was what we want. I mean, isn't it? I mean, we want people. Yeah, I want but people what I mean by that is like when they're parking, when they go to park in the mm-hmm. first, you know, if they know they're going to a restaurant, and they're meeting somebody, they're for sure going to find a parking spot in a parking lot that we have you know if they are driving through the town I mean I'm just going to use Paisley as an example I hate to like use my business in examples like this because I'm not trying to be like this is all about me but for Paisley I have people that will be going to Straub's and just need to run into my store really quickly if they don't see parking they will not stop but if I had a restaurant and people were going to eat, they will find a spot. Does that make sense? Um, 
a little <laughs> bit, but I also find that people don't, you know, we can't get employees to walk from the employee parking lot to that's a different conversation though. That is uh, not the what I'm talking about with the 30 minute. Well, I well, think we, we have a, you don't need 30 minute parking with you. If anything, you cut it to an hour, but 30 minutes is not enough time for even running into a shop. If it's going to be in for if you're going to be able to enforce it. Yeah, I still think that we need, I still think two hours for the the actual street of Lockwood is a very long time to give somebody to park on our main street when we do have parking elsewhere. Well, is it Kirkwood still all two hour parking on the streets and such? I, I believe it is. You I have talked about that earlier. Um, I don't know. Well, this is something we've been discussing since I've been doing this at least 20 years. So we'll probably be discussing it 10 years from now. It's just, there's never a, there's never a perfect answer. No. Until we don't need to park anywhere. To keep slow. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and we've been talking about parking for 50 years. And, well, it's not, and it was going on before that. So the, only, the only, I'm not sure what's going on in front of Stacy's store, but Maybe we give uh, two spots. I don't know if you have two dedicated no, spots. Not, Bill, it's not my store I'm talking about. It's just in general. I'm using Paisley as yeah, an example. Yeah, I'm just saying for certain stores, though, you have... Yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with it because we have a lot of parking down at the end of that street. But I just mean in general. Got it. You know, and... And I realize we've been talking about this for as long as we have, but we have never had Webster Groves have the amount of traffic for restaurants that we have now. That is new. That is all new within the past four years. Well, what Ron and, and Joe were saying is that uh, we had a big study about this 10, 12 years ago and uh, the biggest culprits were the actual property owners and their employees in front of their own stores. That was so, um, anyway, I'm just saying that that's part of the problem. There's a lot of different problems out there. So, but it's definitely something to keep looking at. One more thing and I'm done. I don't want to like beat this dead horse, but the two hour, how I feel about that is you go out to dinner, you eat, you move your car because you know, you're in a two hour that does not allow people to stay in shop. But it also doesn't allow you to find a different parking spot on the main strip or like in a parking lot. You know, it's just as enough for somebody to park, go to a restaurant, get in their car and leave. I personally feel like the amount of time needs to be dropped or removed. And I understand what you're saying about par employee parking and that's why it's a two hour but we've never had this many people coming to our town to stay and eat before. Well, one of the problems with reducing it, especially a significant amount, is that if people start getting parking tickets, they're going to be less inclined to come back to the area. Now, I, don't no how, parking I don't tickets. know how often, I don't know how often the police uh, go no. around and check and check that, but... Um, that could be that could be a problem down the road margaret we don't have anybody giving tickets for parking okay i, well, I, I, I differ with that we our parking fines are actually up this year so officer Razul, that's all he does is parking tickets and we're up significantly i'm very surprised by that <laughs> i don't know his traffic enforcement or his pattern of enforcement i just saw him yesterday Yesterday, I had stopped at Sushi Station for lunch, and he was down in the ticketing people that should have a yellow permit that had parked in a yellow permit spot uh, down in the bottom deck of the ramp. So, and like if, if he is ticketing, is it usually is this usually during the day, right? Yeah, he's, he's usually daytime. It's like nine to five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, not... I think he he starts the morning shift at seven. So okay. that's when they hit. Okay. So. Yeah. 
So yeah, by three or by three thirty, there's no enforcement. Okay. Now parking tickets are ten dollars. There are many people I think that just simply. Okay. Right. Ten dollars. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what all those reports Yeah, it's a pay for parking scheme for some folks. So. Right. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So commission vacancies, we went through um, new business. I, I don't have anything. I know we have some events coming up. I don't know, and just simply for Joe and others as they have events, if you need time on the agenda, let us know so we can make sure to add it on. So um, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'm gonna be, we will be sending out emails with Fran. We'll be asking for help and uh, such for the street dance and, um, for the, uh, if we need any of the trade association members need new signs or anything, that's all will be coming up in the next uh, week or so. Okay. Webster on Wheels is Sunday. Yay. <laughs> Free big bike ride. Right. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, it'll be interesting. It's not supposed to rain, which is good. So. <laughs> Okay, um, BDC update, uh, Tim's not here. Tim is not here, so I'll just uh, briefly pop in. Fran did send out to all of you, I think you saw the business liaison proposal from the BDC to the council. Uh, so that, that's coming from BDC. Uh, we'll, be, we'll make sure you know the dates. I'm thinking it's gonna be May 10th or 17th. Uh, the council will be taking that, that issue up and, and hearing from BDC and such. So um, wanna make you aware of that. And then uh, the business survey will close later this week. Uh, and BDC will be taking a look at that data and starting to dive in on that. So, for anything I missed that's big on their agenda? Mm -hmm. A city update. It's just a, it's a me show today, it looks like. Um, <laughs> so, uh, real quick, we do send out, and I, I asked Jan to send, uh, Fran, excuse me, to send this out, but it's also on our website. Uh, these, this is the business license report, so you can see all the businesses that have uh, filed and uh, those that have closed. Uh, none, I think, in the recent month here for Old Webster specifically, but uh, they're all there and listed, the publicly available. Um, want to make sure you're aware. Uh, we have noticed uh, and have started conversations. I want to make all the business districts aware. Lots of businesses that, um, as we've gone through the records, have avoided the business licenses, some for many years in a row. Like don't pay and just Don't blow it pay out. at all. So, um, okay. so uh, yours truly is charged by the code to issue the license. That's why my name's on all your business right. licenses and such. Uh, but I also have an enforcement requirement. Uh, and so you're going to see that step up a little bit because right. we, you know, for all of you that do pay, it's unfair to have <laughs> folks not pay. So um, that is not because we don't want business to be well welcomed here and such, but it is the cost of doing business here in Webster Grove. So they need to pitch in. Exactly. And, and included <laughs> in that, there are many that have paid but may be in arrears to the state. Uh -huh. And we get the revocation letters from the state. So, and so it is our job then to... And so if I could touch base with yeah. that in particular. Yep. So the last couple of years, the state sucks. <laughs> yep. I mean, they, so what we went in and we had eight problems mm -hmm. that they said we have. Mm -hmm. There was one problem was ours. Yep. Eight was their mistakes. Sure. It took... 20 hours on the phone sitting on right. hold like you're you're gonna your third in queue your wait time is 15 minutes an hour and a half you're yeah. sitting there i mean yeah. it is unbelievable right and maybe it's because i do all our own we do our own taxes i don't have dave smith pay our right. own, yeah he does our corporate taxes but that's yeah. but it i can't tell you how angry i was with the state yeah. you know and, and that was just ridiculous and so i know that's a requirement by the city and i appreciate it but i do think that if, i think there should be a way that the city you come up here and you and this is yep. you know in march is when we did it because it's been a problem last couple of years i know the routine right. now it's yep. like this is going to take a month to get fixed yep. at least you know that the people are attempting right before they get slapped with a five percent fine and don't get me wrong we're we're good now we're yep. we're all yep. we're on the deadline and everything yep. is fine but Man, I, this, the state, I don't know what's going on. I think a whole bunch of people are working from home and the balls are being dropped 
everywhere. So, so, so when I mentioned the state, we are not in a heavy enforced. So the state is sending us. So let's say we're mid year right mm -hmm. now. You've already paid your license. Mm -hmm. But if you don't pay your quarterly or your monthly or whatever your schedule to remit is, they'll send us a letter that you're in arrears, not just on the yearly no tax due letter, mm -hmm. and ask us to revoke the license, which theoretically we're supposed to do. But I also realize we all here realize how bad the state is because they right. dropped many balls on us. Too, right. right? Yeah, sure. Exactly. So, right. Um, so my en enforcement with the state revocations is not going to be, we got the letter on, you have to shut down. No, no, right? I understand. Right. I understand that. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is, is especially this time of year and it's oh, April yeah. and, and a business like, cause two years ago, we did get tagged with 5% after I didn't, you yeah. know, after I'm jumping through all these hoops for a month, mm -hmm. not to mention it's my busiest part. Oh, of yeah. It's, um, it's one of those things that I was just as frustrated as could be. You know, I tried to do the right thing. And if I think of business, you have a, you have a record that you should have mm -hmm. a record at the, down the here that says, hey, the hub tried to come in and pay. I told them they had to right. call oh, this and fix yes. this. You know, at least give well, them a little, any business right. a little bit of leeway. What, like, for instance, some years we have to do a file an extension just because there's things that we have to, you know, get together. I mean, that's really, if we file an extension, it should also come over for what, like Webster. No, it's, 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 so it's, it's, this is stuff like, um, our January of 2021, um, sales employee tax. withholding, okay. they said was incorrect. Right. You know, and it was like a year ago and a year ago, they didn't say it was bad, you know, and it's just, and so you had to go back yeah. And and try to find that. Right. And it ends up it was fine and it was paid and they cashed the check and they didn't credit it to our account. Right. And that happened time and I had to go to the bank. Oh, guess what? It's over a year old. So now I have to pay for the stupid ass paper. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pay for it to get a copy of the stupid check right. now. I'm just like, are you kidding me? So so I want to I want to be very clear so everyone knows what I'm talking yeah. about with the state and such. This is in regards to your sales tax remittance. Okay. Okay. So if, if you're a business who is licensed in Webster Groves and is remitting sales tax to the state, but then stop, forget whatever, mid-year, they will send a letter if they have already contacted you, but sooner or later at some point, theoretically, okay. sooner or later at some point, they're going to send a letter to us and say, Acme Printing has not remitted their sales tax. Right. And that letter includes the state statute site that requires us as a, a political subdivision then to revoke the business license because they haven't made the obligation to the state. Okay. okay? That's what we're saying. We, we're going to send a letter to you saying, we got this letter. You know, yeah. we, we certainly don't want to revoke you. Right. You know, let us know what's going on. Come in and talk, you know, schedule a meeting, give me a call we're not going to pull somebody just simply because the state said, because we know there's that many issues, right? Right. 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 The, but we do have folks that have gone many years without licenses or some with licenses here, but are seven, six, seven, eight years late to the state. Mm -hmm. And, and ultimately the state law does compel us as a political subdivision. Right. We have to act. We're almost an agent of the state at that point. Right. And so at some point, if that game, I don't want to call it a game, but if that issue continues on without yeah. moving towards a resolution, right. we are compelled to act. Well, I, so. I, I agree with all that. Yeah. Of course. Oh. Yeah, I'm just talking about the annual business right. license. And then yeah. I, it's, yeah, that's what I was talking about, the annual business license, because there's times where, you know, I don't have a meeting with my accountant, like my real meeting with my accountant until, I mean, it's not every year, but it's happened before where I've had to do an extension. I don't actually sit down with my accountant until June. I get it. Yeah, it's okay. it's sales tax and it's and ours was sales tax and um, employee withholding. Sure. Uh, through the state, that's what the two things were. Mm -hmm. And then there's also unemployment tax. I think was one of the things that they didn't credit us yeah. for too. That so. But anyways, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I appreciate it. So I, and I I appreciate everyone filing their business licenses <laughs> and coming in and doing that, and also. I appreciate the comments. So like Stacy, your comments, I mean, ultimately our code, because this is really a process thing, our code allows you to estimate your gross receipts. You shouldn't have to wait till your taxes are fully filed. Right. But I'm what I'm hearing there, and if that's the way we've approached it is, and, and that's no one's fault here, it's just what happens with government and such is that we've said, well, that's the number we need. And we sort of build a hard number where we really allow 
a much more soft number that you can estimate and then you know come back and say, okay, my taxes are done and actually our gross receipts are maybe less. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Thank you for clarifying that. You're actually the first person I've ever heard say that in all 10 years of me owning my business. So I, we are very clear on processes here in a lot of ways. And a lot of times when we say this is a number we need and that over time becomes that it has to be this number. Like look at your tax form. That's the number. Um, so we can, we can work on that with our, our customer service team and how we look at those. So that's all a, a finance function. So happy to take that up. I appreciate that feedback. Okay, so that's it, right? Then the city update. That is it. Other than budget, um, for those, I'm going to quick share quick, quick uh, da, 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 WebsterGrove.org/budget. We have our balancing act up for that as well. So uh, this is for the general budget. So please go in and. Yep. So uh, if you just go to WebsterGrove.org/budget, you will see the balance act that you saw for ARP, but it's all been redone for the budget. So okay. it closes Thursday. So, so you've got two days, two days, two days folks, two days, please, please do it. All right. And our budget will be out next week. Uh, we start on Tuesday with council. Okay. So your budgets have all been entered as you submitted. Um, so next month, could we have an update on our, our personal finances that we have here? Because everybody's business license should be in by the end. The district the, finances. Yes. Yeah. Yes. District finances, just yeah. so we know. Sure. We always were estimating. We yeah. every year we estimate when we're doing our yeah. budget yeah. what they're going to be, sure. and then we'll at least know. Got it. Can do. But yeah, no, I I appreciate you. I've had business owners before tell me that they like just make up numbers. Yeah, you know, I know you guys say you're going to audit somebody every year. You know, and that and what I understand it doesn't happen, but it would be nice. I would even love to see that. You like see the audit? Yeah. I, 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 I have, have to tell you, given the fact that we have. I don't say discovered. I think it's been an open secret here at City Hall that some of the, some folks have existed and not paid their licenses for many years. Sure. Um, I I do think that is justified, even just a sampling, just right. to, to pull think, in and you know. I, yeah, I mean, I hate to say, if you came in my business right now, all I would show you is, and it's, this yeah. is how I do it: is here's my annual, here's where my sales from January one to right. end of December. Right. There's my sales, you know, and it's all on a, it's all on everybody's retail computer. Yeah. Right. It's super simple. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, I agree with that. It's an easy number to come up with, but I like, I schedule all my finances and everything together. So uh -huh. it's not about that. It's just knowing that's when I check everything off my list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, good. Meeting is adjourned. Next meeting will be May 24th. Stacy, thanks for coming with your sick kids. I know that's no fun. Life. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they didn't have what we at uh, the shop had last week. It was not good. So, all right, see you guys. All right, Bye thanks, you all. everyone. Have a good month.